Good morning, my name is Dr. Mark Pease, Performance Doc. Today I'm going to be talking about ketonics. This measures breath acetone. Now that's distinctly different than the blood ketone, which measures beta-hydroxybutyrate. Your beta-hydroxybutyrate is more like a warehouse. That is, it accumulates in your blood as you're in ketosis longer and longer and longer and at the levels that you're in ketosis. Whereas, the ketonics, the breath acetone, actually measures what's happening in the manufacturing, the smoke coming out of the chimney, if you will. Okay? So, if you open it up, you will find that it contains a number of different items. And I've modified this somewhat for my own use. First off, I put the battery, the, uh, the charge interface to the computer here. The battery is here, and the breath is here. That led leaves a place for me to insert a book and a pen here to, to track everything. And you're going to want to mark it down what you're doing. But essentially what you do is you take, you charge your battery, you insert it into the device, and it is blinking blue. Now let's talk about the lights. This is enabled with four different color lights. You have blue, green, yellow, and red. And each one of those levels corresponds to a different level of breath acetone. It will fluctuate throughout the day. Okay? That's number one. Number two is that is entirely different than the beta hydroxybutyrate, which is the blood ketone measurement. So if you have a manufacturing plant which is going up and down, up and down, up and down, and you're shipping your ketones out to have them used, what happens is this goes up and down and you have a warehouse here. Now eventually, that warehouse in the morning will either have a lot in it, a little, or none. Okay? That's a combination of how much you produce during the day and how much you use. So do not expect the breath acetone measurement at any time to necessarily cor correlate with what you have in your warehouse. That's going to be your morning blood ketone measurement. Okay? And as you can see right now, your breath, this is blinking, and it will continue to blink. This device needs to heat up to warm up in order to be ready for the measurement. And you'll be able to tell when the device is ready to measure because the blinking light will turn into a steady blue light. Okay? So, we're, we're waiting, and it takes a while. Um, you, know, you will notice that while it's blinking, You'll notice that here you have three different notches, and here you have three different holes. Here you have a positive, and you can select which notch, which depends on which will select which hole. So if you want your breath to go slower, you set it for a smaller hole, and if you want it to go faster, set it for a larger hole. I started out in the, in the middle. Now, we're talking about the main purpose of this is, as you know, we have metabolic conditioning, then we go to metabolic calibration, then we go to metabolic conversion, and metabolic commitment. So conditioning is where initially you're getting your body used to running, using fat as a source of energy. Typically, our current diet uses glucose and carbohydrates as enormous amount of energy, and our fat metabolism is deconditioned, just like a muscle. We haven't used it, used it, it became weak, okay? So that's step one, is metabolic conditioning. You start to get your fat metabolism conditioned to the point where it can supply enough energy for your body to run off from. Number two is calibration metabolic calibration, and that's when you actually sit down and you learn for your body, and everybody's body is different, what gives you high ketones, what gives you low ketones, okay? What impact does a 20-minute walk have? What impact does it have if I go ahead and have a glass of wine versus a beer? What impact does it have if I eat oysters or sardines rather than some beef or some vegetables. 
okay? What, that's, that's what you're after. You're after calibrating your body, actually learning for your body what causes greater levels of ketosis and what causes less levels of ketosis. As you see, we're at blue, okay? So the next thing you want to do is to, when you take your breath, it do not go and then, you know, blow off the top. What you want to do is to blow off the bottom of your lungs, to use the absolute lowest part of the last air out of your lungs. Now, it's important to talk a little bit here about pulmonary physiology. Your lungs, as it turns out, you can force your lungs to take in air. And then you can somewhat force it out, but not all the way. You can't force out all the air out of your lungs. The lungs are elastic, and the last portion of the lungs will collapse themselves. And that's what you want, is the final collapse themselves, because you are not able to physically force that out. What you need to do, though, is to relax and just allow the lungs to go by themselves. Yeah, you can force out some, but it's that last bit of relaxation where the elasticity of your lungs are contracting by themselves to bring it on down. And I have found, you know, I've tried many different ways, and if I try to force it out, all that happens is I'm trying to rush to get my last, my next breath, and inevitably that does not give me a reproducible measurement. Okay, so now we have a solid blue, and uh, last night I had some carbohydrates. So yesterday, during the day, I was going anywhere from a green seven to a yellow red, or a yellow um, at two. So if you remember, it goes blue, green, yellow, red, and there's 10 blinks possible within each one of those. So I've had a cup of coffee this morning with a, about a teaspoon of um, coconut oil, and let's see what it, it runs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so you can see I am of the four levels blue, green, yellow, red. Red is considered sort of your entering into starvation. I am currently at uh, seven on green. So for me, that's pretty good. That's, that's a good solid breath acetone. It means my body is burning. Um, is using the ketones a lot more than it is using the, the glucose. So then to uh, go ahead and reset it, take this off, and it'll go back to reset. Now, after one of the aspects of this device is after you take a measurement, the device needs to purge itself, and that's the blinking uh, blue light. It takes the sensor and it cleans it off and gets it ready for another um, another breath measurement. That's how come if you're going to take two uh, breath measurements back to back, you need it to go from a flashing blue light to a solid light. Now, if you want to, you can set the threshold for blue, yellow, blue, green, yellow, and red, and that's done on the software. You can, you can decide exactly where it crosses over from one to the other. So, it, this is very, very, very sensitive. It will respond to a lot of things. It will respond to your level of activity. 
it will respond to your degree of calorie restriction and it will respond to the degree of the various items that you're eating. Now I know that everybody out there in this age of instant gratification would like to be able to go to a website and say, ooh, I had three ounces of beef, 20 minutes later it should give me four green flashes. That's not how it works. It is your body. You have to figure out what's happening with your body. This, there, it doesn't come with a drop down menu. You're going to have to take the time in order to write down, this is what I did, this was the result. This is what I did, this was the result. And by doing that consistently, you will find out how, what you need to do in order to stay in ketosis. Now, here's the real challenge. That's the first thing you do. And that's what, what I refer to as calibrating your body, okay? Is learning what you do with your body, both activity, calorie restriction, and the food you put in will give what result for ketosis. After you've been at this for somewhere between three to five weeks, your body will have converted. And that's the set, that's the third level. Remember the first was conditioned, the second was calibration and the third is converted and that's where your metabolism your fat metabolism your ketone metabolism is actually strong enough to support all the metabolic needs of your body for energy now you'll always have background glucose i'm not going to address that at this point um, but that you can rely on a steady stream of ketones in order to keep things going the fourth is metabolic commitment this is where you say you know what I really like living high energy. This is the way that I want to live. I do not want to live low energy anymore. I do not want to have the fact that uh, carbohydrates and the high levels of insulin give me a 30 to 50 percent greater chance of having Alzheimer's. I don't want that for my future. I want my future to be one of where it's my body, it's my mind, I'm going to live the life that I want to live. Okay? That's metabolic commitment. Now, in order to do that, you're going to have to address the issue of sustainability because this is a new lifestyle. You know how to you know what is possible, you know how to achieve it, and you know what you're going to need to do. Okay? Now, what you need to do is figure out how to make it sustainable. And that's where this is really good, is there's no simple recipe, there's no simple menu where you can go. You're going to have to figure out what foods, what activities, what sleep schedule works in order to produce ketosis. This measures the activity on a minute-to-minute -minute level of what your body is producing, the breath acetones, which are directly related to the level of ketosis that's going on at any given time. And so that's where this is really valuable. You can start to sample new foods to figure out, well, can I eat green beans? For one person, it may be very, eat, it may be, they may be able to stay in ketosis if they have 60 to 80 carbs a day, grams of carbs a day, where another person may have to have 20 grams of carbs a day, okay? You don't know. You, I mean, it, it would be a real downer if, you had uh, selected 20 grams per carbs a day and you found out that your body was actually one that could uh, do 80 grams of carbs a day versus um, if you were at 80 carbs a day but you still were not achieving the levels of decreased insulin and decreased uh, glucose use that you wanted to achieve to set yourself for a five-year schedule of 80 carbs a day, but it didn't produce what you were after, that would also not be appropriate. So this device, what it'll allow you to do is to calibrate your body to, on a minute to minute, decide what foods give you what level of ketones, what level of activity give you what level of ketones for production. Whereas the blood glucose, the blood ketones, that is just, when you wake up in the morning, how much beta-hydroxybutyrate do I have in my storage room? Okay, that's really what that is. This tells you what the manufacturing plant is doing. Whether you're operating at a green three, or you've increased it to now you're operating at a yellow two. Or if you've gone a little bit too far in your 
you're operating at a red 3 level. Okay? And you can set your, uh, your level again, the level of manufacturing that you want. You can go in and you can set the thresholds for blue, green, yellow, and red. But that will just change the color of the light that's flashing. It won't change what's actually going on in your body. Okay? So, again, I'm Dr. Mark Pease, Performance Doc.